doing? Thank you for your patience while we're getting the technical details together. My name is Audrey. Um, so glad to be able to be here with you today another day. It's been a great conference, don't we all agree? And it'd be awesome, yes. So I'm with the Microsoft uh, Flow team. I am in the citizen application platform, so I work with both Power Apps and Flow every day. I love these products to death. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Raise your hand if you use Power Apps. Awesome, that's a lot of you. Raise your hand or leave your hand up if you have an app in production, which means your company has an app it needs because of you. Awesome, I gotta give you all a big cheer. How about Flow? How many of you using Flow? A little bit more, actually, I think. That's interesting. And how many of you have flows in production? So, okay. For a t-shirt, the thing you hate most in flow. The expression thing too small and too constrained. I think everybody would probably, be t uh, probably agree with you there, yeah. Um, okay. Favorite thing in Flow that you love? Pardon? Templates. Templates. Thank you for loving that. I'm going to let my PM know that. OK. Favorite thing in Power Apps that we love? OK. Yes, it's got some scope, doesn't it? Yeah, sorry. Okay, my, my, my throw skills aren't as good as they. Worst thing in Power Ops, you hate it. Back there. That's what we're going to talk about. Thank you. <laughs> Can ha someone help me get that back to him, if possible? Kind of, because I don't throw that well. All right, so I'm so glad he ended on that point. It's perfect. Um, I have a list here in SharePoint. As you can see, it has 11,000 plus items, right? Now, I don't know if you guys know, but this threshold seems to be an enemy to you, but it's a friend. Because what is it protecting for us? Performance, that's right. If we're too slow, that's not good. Nobody likes to wait for that little circle of hope to stop spinning, right? But also, sometimes you want to avoid having too much data in your app at any given time as well. And that's the reason for the Power Apps constraint. So I'm just going to take a peek at that so because some of you may know about it, somebody might not. I'm just going to edit an app here. And what I'm going to do in this app is I'm going to go to the app settings because you probably have heard of the word delegation, right? It's your favorite word, isn't it, right? You just can't wait to talk about delegation, right? Well, delegation has been, okay, I have it open, so let's go there, right here, okay. So you can set a delegation limit in your advanced settings right here. So you cannot type more than 2,000 because it'll just yell at you and say, sorry, you don't understand math. My top number is 2,000. Now, does anybody know what this means? What does this 2,000 number really mean? OK, I like that. I'll tell you. So, what it means is that I'm going to restrict the number of items that has number of rows for any de non-delegatable queries. So when you look at the page on delegation, which will be in the deck, and by the way, I have a deck with all the things I'm going to talk about in it, so don't worry about taking notes. You'll get it after the conference. But um, you can only kind of qu query that, that non-delegatable source up to the first the, not the last, but the first 2,000 records, which means technically I can get in here more than 2,000, but when I start doing non-delegatable queries, now I'm in trouble. That page in the Power Apps website tells you which functions are delegatable and which functions are not delegatable. So you need to keep that in mind when you're doing filters. But I'm going to show you how you can use Flow to get the data so you can do any filter you want, all right? But I wanted you to understand this. And you can see this in this app here, where I have connected to that ARB listings, and I've got up to 2,000 items in this list. Now, this happens to be a collection. If I directly connect it to the list, it will scroll. So you'll start with 100, 
and then you'll find yourself go to 200, 300. The gallery only will hold 100 items at a time to kind of pr protect the performance in Power Apps. But I use collections a lot because they speed up the app and the queries in the app. So I would get a maximum of 200 records. And this formula up here that I'm using is a kind of a helpful formula. It's just counting the rows in this gallery. And this gallery is connected to SharePoint. Now, I have another gallery over here with nothing in it right now. And this one is going to return items from a flow query. All right? So the galleries are identical, except for they're getting the data in different ways. And what I'm going to do if I have time at the end is show you some tricks for how to make your galleries beautiful as well. All right, so I'm going to go to Manager Flows. And I've kind of started this off just for the sake of time. This is a Power Apps. Uh, so this is a flow. Every, so everybody knows that when you make a flow, it starts with a trigger. The two button triggers that people know the most is the Power Apps and the Flow button trigger, right? So the Flow button is a digital button or a physical button. And then the Power Apps means something's going to be pressed or done in Power Apps. Now, by the way, I don't know if you know this, but you don't have to use a button. You could make it be an on-change event or an on-visible event to go launch that Flow. So it doesn't have to be a button. But in Flow, it must start with that Power Apps button so that it knows, let me get this data. FYI, I'm going to tell you a secret. In Flow, we're working on improving this button so you can do more with it. All right? Now, what I'm going to add at the beginning of this flow is just this little search. If you notice at the top, I put a keyword search in here. So I want to pass that to Flow first. So I create a variable, and I just call it var string search. And in here, right here, I'm going to click if I scroll over to the right in Gilbert's favorite place, I'm going to click Ask Empower Apps, and it creates this variable. Now, you want to be careful when you're clicking on this, right? Because each click represents a different variable, and you must pass each one from Power Apps. It must be included in the formula. So if you hit this by accident twice, then in your formula has to have that, that variable twice. OK? Now, we are working on this. We want to make this easier, so we're going to actually find other ways to pass variables, not only so that you could ask twice and delete the mistake, but so that you could rename them. Right now, you can't name them. Have you noticed that? We want to give you the ability to name these variables. The tip I give you today about naming is it reflects the name of the action. So it's a good practice before you click Ask in Power Apps, rename the action first. And then when you click Ask in Power Apps, it's going to say whatever the name of this is with the spaces removed. Now, what's important there is that when you go to Power Apps, now when you click on that formula bar, it will say what this is saying. Make it a little easier, especially for those of you that are doing flows for Power App users, which means it's not the same person, right? So make it easy for the Power Apps person to understand your variables by renaming the action. And I would suggest making it a little shorter than I did. I just kind of was in a hurry and did that fast. All right? Any questions on the variable? Everybody understand why I made the variable? Little couple of shaking heads. Good. OK. So now I'm going to do a simple get items. Now, um, anybody in the room not ever use Flow? So I can know how low to take this? Never use Flow? OK, good. So I added the action get items, which is from the SharePoint connector. And I connected it to the site and the list. Now, I'm going to give you a really important rule right now. And I want you to remember it in your heart, right? Filter at the get items level whenever you can. So don't, don't filter later. Filter now. And remember that in Power Apps, you can make a button that is filtering something, and that's going to the flow that's filtering that, right? Filter here, because that's where your performance. It will be fast. If I try to get 11,000 items right here, it's going to take some time, right? Not a whole lot of time, but it will take some time. And then I have to filter. That's going to take some time. Do it right here. How many people have used the filter queries in the past, OData queries? 
only a few of you, and I feel your pain, okay? Because we don't document this so well from a flow perspective, but in your deck, I'm gonna give you like 20 of the top OData queries. This is one that people find really hard because it's really easy. Most of the time you use EQ for equal, you use less than is LT. Some of them are pretty logical, but when you start thinking contains, now you have to use substring of, which is an OData filter, not the flow substring. Two different animals, right? I didn't even have to go to the dynamics expression pane to type this, because this is really purely OData. So I type substring of, now in a single quote, so a set of single quotes, I put that variable. So now it's saying substring of that search, that whatever that search text is, if it's found in a column called host name, then give me that back. So I have a column called host bank. By the way, I didn't tell you, this is a listing of Airbnb rooms, so private rooms, single rooms, and so there's a lot of rooms, and each one has a host name. It's like the unique identifier for this database. So I'm searching the keywords for the host name. Now, I also have a top count of three. Anybody know what top count is for? Top count? Really important. Think about this. This is saying, out of the results you get, I want you to limit it to three. Now, I'm limiting it to three right now because you're probably, all of you got funny faces because you're like, wait, I thought we were going to get 11,000. But I want only three because I need the schema. And the schema doesn't need a lot of data, right? I don't want to copy this JSON book, right? So I'm going to get three items back, which will give me enough to get a nice, neat schema that I can use in my payload. And if we don't know that word, just think of a way of loading data into your response, right? And so I'm limiting it to three for now, but we'll change it. And the next thing I'm going to do is decide what columns I want. So I use a select action, and now I can pick from my columns. And so you'll see Gilbert's point here as I start to do this. Now notice I'm paying attention to which actions I'm pulling data from. So if you had a very complex flow in here, pay attention that you're pulling it from your get items right, your columns, and I'm going to get the host name, I'm going to get the, let's see, what else can I get here? The name, the neighborhood, and you see what I'm doing, I'm just clicking, the right side is where the dynamic data is going. I like to always include the ID as well. So I'm saying these are the columns I want in my app. And I think that's all I want. We can always change the app if I forgot something. Remember, you can also take the link to the item as well if you want them to be able to click on something in your gallery, right? So keep that in mind. I'm trying to see if I forgot anything. I don't think I did. OK, so then now my select statement is done. And I just want to put real human names over here, right? Because this doesn't have anything to do with the data. I can type whatever I want. Notice I can rename these to whatever I want to see in my data. And now I'm going to just save that. Now, along the way, this is a good practice. I, you know, I'm worried about time at this point, but I can just run a quick test on this, just kind of, I kind of check like every action or two as a best practice. That way if you get in a problem, at least you know the problem is isolated to this action I just added, right? So I'm going to go ahead and type one of the words I know that's in a few of these, because that's the search, because I'm testing it's going to prompt me for what Power Apps would tell me. And now if I look at this, right, in the body area, you'll see that I have those items, and I have all the data in the get items, right, every column. Now, I could have restricted it to a view, but don't get confused there. There is a way to choose the view, but it doesn't, like, give you only those columns. It also gives you the system columns from SharePoint, all right? But by hitting select, I'm able to specifically say I only want these columns. And so this is also helpful when you have nested arrays 
you can pull out exactly what you want, okay? So now, the last thing I need to do is figure out a way to get it back to Power Ops. And basically, we have two ways we do that. Respond to Power Ops and response. The key thing here to remember, and every time I tell someone this, I'm on a campaign, they don't get it, and so I have to clarify this. The key thing to remember is that because I have a table of data, like lots of data, I need to use response. If I was just getting a single element of data, and I'll show you that here, when I respond to Power Ups, the choices I have are text, yes, no, file, email, number, and date. And these are single elements, but I want the whole table, the whole collection, so I won't be able to use this. Now, the only exception, I'll give you a little hot tip, if you join the data into a string, you could use that, but then in Power Apps, you'll have to split it, okay? But I find it much easier to go with the regular response. And you know what I forgot to do? Sorry. I need to go back to my results because I need that payload. Remember, I restricted it to three to get my payload? So I'm going to grab that from the output. And you'll notice these arrays start and end with a bracket. Open bracket, close bracket. It's all nice and neat in this select. So I will just control C that to my clipboard. If you want to make sure, you can up open up Visual Studio Code, which kind of put this nice and neat and pretty. But what you end up with is one element for each uh, row in your database, in your, sorry. <laughs> in your SharePoint list. So, and these are the rows that, these are the fields or the columns that we asked for and their result, okay? We're gonna use that for our schema in the response. So I'm gonna do a new step and I'm gonna add response. Once I add response, I will choose that one. And what I need to do is just add that payload. So the body is gonna be the result of the output in the select and then I will use a sample payload, which is what we copy and pasted in here, so that the data is properly formatted. Okay, so now I'm, I'm, I'm good. I can do a test to make sure that I don't have any errors on that um, payload. It's a good idea, always test. Again, you wanna isolate your troubleshooting. And what I mean by that is, if you do too much, now you gotta figure out, is the problem in Power Apps, is the power in flow, is the problem in flow, where is it in flow? Do testing along the way, okay? Um, we had no issues. The only thing I have to do, anybody catch what I haven't done yet that I need to do? Exactly. I have set this to top three, but in Power Apps, I want more than three. So I'm gonna go into my get items here, and now, here's an interesting thing about top. Um, and I hope I have time. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to use top. I'm going to show you another option here. I'm out of time. So let me just show you this option. If I go into settings here, all I have to do is put a 5,000 item threshold here to paginate. And actually, what I will get back, it will keep paginating. 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 until it gets to the number that it reaches. And that's basically it. The only thing I didn't show you that I don't have time because I'm out of time is to add the button. And basically, I think most of you know how to do that. You just do action, flow, and then you choose the button that you just made. And then after you choose that button, you fill in the formula and off you go. Okay? Really easy. Um, what I will do in the deck also is point you to, I have several things on this. I have a video, I have a doc, I have a deck. We have like three things. You can get as many items as you want into Power Ups. It, it will go fast too. Sorry I ran out of time and you guys have a great rest of your conference. <laughs>